primary to the primary that is the moral object and also secondary to the intention they increase or diminish the goodness the moral goodness or the evil of human acts for example a person um, this is a typical um, uh, tele um, yeah tele serie um, scene no? the, the, the husband comes home and he sees um, the the wife unfaithful no? and so he grabs no whatever he could grab there in the kitchen with a knife and uh, his eyes could not see anymore you know, anything but it is full of rage and he has murdered the um, the wife and her partner so in that case there's a circumstance of passionate uh, rage you know? meaning um, it clearly is an evil act the murder of his wife and also the partner but because of that burst of anger and circumstance it has diminished perhaps the evil content or quality of the human act the act of murder um, another thing is um, when uh, when he has plotted um, the murder or the homicide of his spouse and his partner with a series of steps no? contemplated that is more evil in other words because um, he has tried to plan it and more evil even if he has tortured them. So some circumstances are very important because they really clearly increase or diminish the goodness, evilness of the human act. It also affects their definitely, that's why it's good to take them into consideration, the responsibility, the response of the person first and foremost before God now that um, you are hearing this class <laughs> from a priest, you know, a person, for example, who is acting out of fear of a fear of death, you know, definitely has less responsibility. You know, even if the act, the moral object that he has uh, accomplished is, is not good, it's evil. Okay. Given these circumstances, the place, the time you know, in which an act is carried out, the act can definitely be a good one, objectively good, done with subjective goodness. And thus, the entire thing, the entire action is ordained to its true ultimate end. So what I'm just mentioning here, if the object, moral object, is good, the intention is good, Okay, then given the, also the circumstances, the action can already be ordering, ordering man to his final destiny, to his ultimate end, which is God. Now, in, therefore, the action is good. Okay, there are some complications in reality. And... Um, we briefly point them out here. Um, there are actions that produce what you call double effect. A good one and a bad one. So, um, Efficient Ethics describes this actions as indirect voluntary actions especially because uh, especially termed as such because they are some of the effects are not directly desired okay um, for example a mother would want to sleep late because she has to take care of her baby. You know, so in the process, she 
um, how do you call this, becomes unhealthy. Although his desired effect was to care for the toddler. No? So indirectly wanted was the headaches that follow, the fatigue that follow after. So in, we are now in front of a case, this happens in most situations, of an indirectly voluntary willed effect. And it's termed as indirect voluntary actions resulting from negligence regarding something one should have known or done. This um, headache, for example, that she could have uh, thought of. And there are rules in relation to indirect voluntary actions. And we'll mention a few here. So if the person knows and can foresee and can avoid, for example, the headache, then the action is imputable to her, meaning the sleeping late, you know, is she is responsible for that. And in front of God, lack of sleep, lack of care for one's body could also be considered in its very light manner a, an offense against the Creator. It could be a venial sin. We will talk about venial and mortal, mortal sins later, you know. In front also of people, it could also be imputable to him or her um, when he ha or she has fully known the effects and she could possibly avoid it. Actions with double effect normally will have this rule. It is licit to carry actions in order to obtain the good effect. Directly will. Even though the evil one cannot be avoided. Even if the, the, there are indirectly willed um, consequences that are evil, it is possible if they're clearly with proportion a good effect that was desired. Um, for example, um, you're trying to rent um, rooms in a hotel that you possess, or that you own. And you know that one of your customers will use the rooms of the hotel for an illicit act, for an unfaithful relationship, for example. Okay, so it's an effect that you did not directly will. You have willed indirectly. No? So it is not imputable to you. You are not sinning by merely renting out the rooms of your hotel. Now, although there clearly was, and you already see it, you know, that evil effect because you did not directly will it. And there's something good that you have directly willed, which is to care for your family out of the earnings of that. And proportionally as well, it is clear from based on your study that most of the, the people visiting your hotel, renting out your rooms, are good people. So you're doing good to society. You're serving society by offering these rooms. So you're doing well. If frequently followed by direct will action, we also can say that that is blameworthy. It is a voluntary thing in the process in causa. Uh, wh what do I mean by this? Uh, for example, um, based on that hotel, uh, how do you call this um, um, example as well? No. So if you are renting your rooms to the general people, and uh, you already know that. Um, there's this man who always rents a room and he is unfaithful. And you pass by, you, you manage to get to know him and you directly willing now the same action of tolerance. You did not say anything to that man whom you know who, is, who has a wife. Then your action now, which was simply renting out the room to him, was followed by a directly willed action 
the circumstance is that you know him and you allow him no that's okay you, te- you, te- you told it to him it becomes blameworthy therefore so indirectly voluntary actions are not imputable are not blameworthy if there is a greater good that is foreseen and directly will okay and the evil thing or the evil effect is not willed okay so there, there has to be some pointers here also regarding responsibility you know before god we have a responsibility with our actions and it's because he has given us freedom freedom makes us responsible for all our actions to the extent that we are or they are rather voluntary and when it is voluntary there always is a responsibility before god and before men imputability and responsibility for an action however can be increased based on the circumstances and the voluntariness that is before god or diminished greatly as well if it is less willed okay but in all actions there is a concomitant responsibility before god and you already think of this responsibilities um, of actions in relation to good actions it is good to think that god never forgets them there is what you call in moral theology and christian ethics merits it is that recompense now meaning god will reward all the things that we do well or we have done all the actions we have done with good intention with the right moral object as well it is something that he has promised for us it is a right not in the sense that we have complete out of justice um, um, we really deserve it now but because he has promised us through grace the promise of heaven it is based on his choice because he has decided to make us his children and everything that the children according to also his promises have done they also will obtain a reward each of them you know um, in the afterlife and that ends my presentation i know i or i think i i think there are many questions so it's good perhaps to um i will stop my share